Okay, so this is going to be a quick video uh, just about NPCs and how I do them as a narrator, as a game master. How do I deal with them? Um, I'm gonna follow the same pattern I did on the other videos, just gonna show some, some stuff here and talk about it. Uh, but I, yeah, let, let's go into it, I guess. Let's let's be straight to the point. Let's be concise. Okay, so I want to talk philosophy first, but I, I'll leave it here in case you want to read. I'm not going to get into details. I translated this one, this one page. Uh, like all my other philosophy ideas, I, I as if I can avoid big lists and, and tables, I will do it. So that is the number one mentality I have when I use NPCs or, or monsters, whatever you want to call them. Another thing, quick reference. Uh, as a narrator, as a GM, you want to be able to quick reference, some, quick as, reference something as quickly as possible as to not disrupt the flow of the game. So if you can, just by a, a, a fraction of a second, of thinking time be able to use a creature you just imagine into the game that's perfect that's best uh, a good system should allow you to do that if you want to like role play and not play like let's say like a, a board game thing right like i don't know who's on site i guess never plays on site but i assume you need the uh, a good reference for each creature each, each type of zombies right again if i'm wrong Sorry, not sorry. Uh, anyway, so, and you, I like the idea that you can quickly make up a creature on the spot and because the mechanics allow it, make something that uh, feels real and feels very much like a planned creature. So with that in mind, all I need when running a, a NPC or a monster is some bullet points. So all of this, like, this is fluff, this is like lore thing, this is uh, food for thought, food for ideas and hooks, like how can you use these creatures. Like in the game, it's just these, these bullet points, they are all you need. Why? So if you know your system very well, you know the probability, the dice probabilities, right? I know that a 15 is a very good target number to have when rolling my 2d12. So if I just here, have here two pass, like, oh, generally in combat, like they are good, they are like strong animal people. They're always rolling 17 for combat. If they're trying to send something through their smell, an 18, which they will rarely fail. Because again, like they're dogs, right? That's the whole thing. Dogs <laughs> smell good, smell good. They can track good. Uh, that does not smell good if you don't make them smell good. Anyway, and like socially, like catching cues, things like that. A 14, which is like, it's like, let's say 50-50, you know. And if some traits, again, like how my game works, like it, I bite, they are good at biting because they have jaws of a dog, of a canine. So if they try to bite like they have a higher chance of doing so like of doing good effect uh, same thing with smell or wit so you just want to have some three i try to have a maximum of three traits per npc or creature when i design them like more than that becomes cumbersome and if i can only two if i can do on only one that, that's perfect that's nice because again like you as a person you have uh, a lot of traits, you have a lot of experience, you have you have uh, history, right? But on your day-to-day -day basis, when you are at work, how many of your experiences apply in that situation, whatever you work with? You know, uh, all the package you have does not apply in every sing single thing you do. Uh, only the relevant parts apply. So that's the idea with traits. You have little, you focus on their focus and whenever you're out of their element you can just role play that as a dm as a gm because again gms need to role play they are also role playing it's not only the players and if you are role playing 
It makes it easy to determine when you need to make something harder, when you make, need to make something easier for an NPC to test or roll, you know? So yeah, that, that's all I do. Like the, all this fluff again is for world building. Uh, these are creatures that I've personally put effort into to designing, but like if I get like some other ones, yeah, like the doppelganger, you know, like I don't, explain, I don't need to explain much about doppelganger. I didn't change that much from the, the thing. I guess the one th single thing I put here that I actually like is if you see your own doppelganger, you generate the, the Sina, which is like the, the bad luck thing. Uh, or something like that, right? Because that's the only different thing. But again, I just have some, some bullet points here, some traits. Like they can change themselves, they can copycat. Uh, then in this case, I have abilities, the same as the copied person, humors, the same as the copied person, to heat. Um, this one is not translated. Same as the copied person. And again, that, that's all you need to, to role play, right? Uh, like the dragon. I did add some like procreation diet, but like this is all I need for the dragon. Like the two heat. The two pass, it's an 18. It's a strong creature, just 18 for everything. It's smart, it's strong, it's fast. It can breathe fire, it can fly, it is big. Again, fire breathing. Uh, and, and I just add like a, a little nugget here of like mechanics. Uh, his highlight attack, his breath attack can expand to adjacent distances, uh, which again, I'll make a combat video maybe some other time. I'm still tweaking it to make it better and I still haven't played the current tweaks I've made so I'd want to make a video before I feel comfortable in sharing something but like th that's how I do NPCs you don't need much you just need to know like you need to understand your system how the dice works how the dice work and from there you can just you know wing it whenever you need to like the the, the dwarf thing uh, I like this one I changed a bit but again I'm not gonna get into it like two traits, in intelligent, uh, in in un inconspicu inconspicuous, uh, to pass, 13, uh, 13 for anything about strength, 17 about anything uh, mental, and 19 about anything about caves. And they have a spell, which is uh, look like stone, you know, like uh, simulate stone. Again, the magic video I explained this can be an infinitude of effects, but like that's all you need, really. Um, but yeah, that that's it. So yeah, final words. Like I said, you you need to eliminate, you need to eliminate uh, pauses in your game as much as you can. You want just to keep. You need to keep things flowing. That that's your job. As a GM, you need to role play the characters, the world. If you do that, things go smoothly and everything is fine. So yeah, simplify. I like to simplify. That's that's my motto, I guess. It's not really my motto, but simplify things and you'll be happy. Yeah, I guess it goes to ten again. Just a, an extra addendum. If you really have like a very important any PC or creature that you're making then pick some time to elaborate more but again thing the nature of the the hobby is unexpected unexpected things happening because player agency and player co-creation and all that so you should want to have a system that you can wing things on the fly you know mm, but yeah <laughs>